Hi, Eric from MobileMustHave.com here, and we are here with Caitlin again from the Mobile Must Have customer support team, and um, we're going to install a roof antenna on her 25-foot travel trailer. So when Caitlin and I first started talking, um, one of the questions we ask at Mobile Must Have is, if you're going to be working remotely for us, tell us about your internet setup. And most of the time, if they don't have an ideal setup, we can help them get started pretty easily because that's kind of what we do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Caitlin and her husband, Casey, were ahead of the game and had already purchased a Max Transit Duo Pepwave router and were off to the races, going pretty strong, working for a, uh, a, a another campground, actually, so a national campground company, before she came on board with us. Mm -hmm. So that's been working pretty good for you, right? Yeah, yeah, we love it. We're Great. But we wanted to level up that yes. connection a little bit and get her a roof antenna because they are looking to go a little bit farther off the beaten path and need a little bit better cell signal. Absolutely. So here at Mobile Must Have, I think probably the single biggest concern or question we get in customer service is typically around the installation of a roof antenna. Right. It's super scary. It's like, <laughs> how am I going to drill that hole in my roof? What if it creates problems? All those things. So anytime I get a chance in the field to do an install, we jump at it. Uh, so today we're actually going to be installing an antenna we haven't featured yet on the channel, which is Pepwave's Mobility 42 antenna, which is an omnidirectional 7-in-1 antenna. It has four cellular connections, two Wi-Fi connections, and one GPS connection. So it's ideal for our 5G uh, BR1 Pro modems, our Category 18, or our dual modem Category 12s, like the Duo and the Transit Pro E. If you're a customer that has like a BR1 Mini or a BR1 MK2, so that's a Category 6 modem that only has two antenna leads, a single modem, we'd recommend you look at the Mobility 22G just to save yourself a little bit of money. You don't need the 7-in-1, you can go with the 5-in-1. In terms of tools, what we need for the install, um, we're going to be doing a surface mount directly on the roof. This does come with a pole mount uh, antenna option, but we're not going to be using it because they're just going to get it up there and kind of set it and forget it, yep. so to speak. <laughs> um, we're going to need a one and three quarter inch hole saw, and that's going to help us get the wires down through the roof, um, a drill, obviously. And then we're also going to use a three eighth inch drill bit, a long bit that's going to get us a pilot hole from the inside and from the roof down through the entire thickness of the roof. Before we get up on the roof, a couple notes because the Mobility 42 is an antenna we haven't featured on videos before. A common question is, does it come with a pole mount? And the answer is, yes, it does. This is included free of charge. However, it's plastic. Uh, so if you do decide to use this, make sure you secure your cables to the pole and keep weight off of the antenna. We have had a couple customers in high winds snap these brackets. Alternatively, we do sell a bracket by Parsec that has a hole big enough. And if you look for our Doberman pole mount, um, you can actually use that if you do break this. And it is a solution since Peplink cannot provide these uh, as replacements, at least we haven't been able to get them to tell us how to. The second thing is this locking nut here. Now, we're not going to use this for the installation. A lot of people think they have to cut a larger hole on the inner part of the ceiling and reach up there and lock this down. And that's not necessary for an RV installation. The adhesive mount, the die core, and just gravity will do, be more than enough to keep that antenna down. And we have years of experience with that. So we're going to disregard this locking nut and the pole mount is a good option in case you want to do a pole mount installation. Let's get up on the roof. All right, so welcome to the roof of Caitlin and Casey's RV. And we're at the back end of the trailer here. And in the rig, as we'll show you here, they have a compartment where a TV is mounted and that's kind of where their electrical control center is. So that's ideally where they would want the wires to enter because that's where they keep their pep wave. Now, We've looked in that cabinet and it also in the inside has 12 volt power um, with a cigarette lighter adapter. Now you may find that you'll find 12 volt power in a number of different places in an RV, but common places are if you have a TV antenna that is powered or boosted, you can grab 12 volts off of there, a cigarette uh, lighter plug, or possibly even a light switch. In terms of our antenna, we're doing the Pepway 42 
mobility series, as we discussed earlier. That antenna requires about five to six inches from the edge of the RV in uh, for the hole to be drilled. So we're actually going a little bit further than that. We've marked our hole right here where we're going to drill our initial pilot hole with our small um, 3 8 inch drill bit all the way through. Caitlin's going to film from the inside as I drill down. Now one note, it's kind of difficult to understand where the studs are or the, the metal brackets typically that make up the framing for the roof. But in reality, I found that if you walk around on a roof and you slowly just pressure down on these roofs, you'll typically be able to find the firm spot, which is where that brace is. Uh, there's obviously always, almost always one right at the edge. And that's typically sometimes even a double. Um, and then from there in, you typically have around 16 inches of hollow space, which is why we've marked this location here. In walking around the roof, I'm actually feeling a stud again at about this location. So we want to avoid that so we don't drill into metal and create um, a situation where we've got to get through that, that metal. If we go in between the two studs, where we kind of feel a little bit of a softer roof area, what we're gonna find there is just insulation and it'll be very easy to run the wires through. All right, so we've got our initial pilot hole drilled through and it's right exactly where we wanted it to be. Now we're gonna go for our larger hole, which is gonna accommodate the downspout here, or the spigot of the antenna, which is for this particular model, a one and three quarters. Um, if you have a parsec antenna, it's a one and a half, um, but make sure you check the spec sheets on the diameters or reach out to us and we'll give you the recommended hole size for drilling in. So this is my one and three quarter inch hole saw bit. And before I get started here, I'm actually going to put that down in the hole and then I'm going to use a pen and I'm going to mark around the rubber roof and I'm going to score it with my uh, razor blade just to ensure that when I start to cut through that roof, I don't pull on this rubber roof and cause any damage to it. So we're going to go ahead and mark that and then cut out that aspect of the rubber before we drill down through the roof from the top and the bottom. All right, and that is it. We are done on the roof. Now, Dicor, unlike me, tends to improve in appearance over time. <laughs> so what I recommend to people is usually touching Dicor less and messing with it less is usually your best option. It's incredibly sticky. And for the most part, if you do a bead of this, and there may be some minor imperfections. Remember, it's a self-leveling product, so it will smooth out on its own over time. You wanna do an install like this when it's over, I recommend over 50 degrees or so. That's gonna make sure that that adhesive 3M tape is gonna get the best possible bond. Um, and on a sunny day, if you can, that'll just really make sure that everything levels out and gets nice and smooth. And obviously on a dry day, you don't want to do this when it might rain. Now that said, Dicor does say that it can take rain, I think within like two or three hours of application. So that's pretty cool. But I typically say recommend, definitely don't, um, don't do any Dicor work if you see rain within the next 24 hours, just to, just to stay safe. All right, so we are done. Can't see much with this TV in the way, but that was kind of the point. Uh, but we've got our 12 volt power back here. If you can see coming off through our 12 volt plug and our antenna wires coming down that we've 
zip tied and cable tied back and our pep wave just sitting here right here on the shelf for easy accessibility to the sim cards i think we're all set all right well we're here with harlow and caitlin harlow how's the internet it's good speak <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, again, let's uh, just remember you can reach out with info at mobilemusthave.com and speak to Caitlin or one of our team members or go to mobilemusthave.com and you can start up a chat with our members directly there. Um, you know, Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the road. Thank you.